Hi, I'm David Gregg, director of the Rhode Island Natural History Survey. This evening, I want to talk about fly traps. In fact, the inspiration for this video is The Fly Trap by Frederick Schoberg. This is a book published in Sweden in 2004 and in English in 2014, and I recommend it to everybody. This book is the author's reflections on insect collecting and surfed flies, geography, and on life in general. And interestingly, it's framed around the life of the inventor of the malaise trap, which is a kind of fly trap that's still used today. Rene Edmond Malaise was born in the late 19th century, did most of his work in the early 20th, and he invented the malaise trap. And this video is going to be about malaise traps, but it's also a way to recommend this book as really readable and interesting and a great perspective on insect collecting. The Rhode Island Natural History Survey presents videos to showcase the animals, plants, geology, and natural systems that surround us, and the people and organizations working to understand and conserve them. So, this thing is a malaise trap. Malaise traps for, for catching flying insects. And um, the surveys had this one for years, from back in the day when we used to do inventories. Um, more inventories than we do now. Um, and we haven't used it in a really long time, and I'm curious about how they work and how to set one up. So I've untangled the lines. They look like they're fraying. Before I set it up, I probably should do something about that. Okay, the last step is to put the sampling head in, and that's this funnel-y thing with some um, no-pest strip, some DDVP at the top. So, and it just goes right up there. Good thing I'm tall. There you go. All right, there it is. So, what did we learn from doing this? One. It's better with two people or three. The other is I should have put the pole down on this side of the middle piece because I think it probably is supposed to go through these two loops here. Uh, the other thing is that these bottom straps here want to come out more kind of towards the ends rather than straight out at the sides because they help to hold that middle piece this this middle piece here out. Anyway, there we go. Let's see what happens. So the theory is that flies come along like this and they fly into this uh, vertical screen and their um, startle response is to go up. So they go up and this top funnels them up 
into the collecting head. So it's been exactly 48 hours and I'm going back to see what the malaise trap has brought for us. There it is. Let's check it out. There's the collector. Uh-huh. Well, that's pretty cool. Huh. Take it in and dump it out and see what we got. Looks like a few spiders got in there and did some webbing things. So I'll wash this out um, just to make sure that when I use the trap again in the future, there aren't any insects from this trapping site that end up in the next sample. And I'll have to put the... Um, uh, no, uh, and, I'll, and I'll have to put the no pest strips back in their foil pouch. Moths, Lepidoptera. These are caddis flies. Oh, there's a honeybee. Oops. Ah, uh, leaf hopper. There are a few flies, which is what we were looking for. There's one right there. Well, mosquitoes are flies, of course, but I mean non non mosquitoiferous flies. In case you're wondering, I'm using uh, stamp tongs to sort out this sample. What I like about stamp tongs is, well, first they have really long points. And they don't have any um, texture on the inside that might make marks or damage the specimens. They have a very light grip, so you don't have to squeeze too hard and potentially squash stuff. Um, these ones are Prince Solingen, and um, I got them at the Spelman Museum of Stamps and Postal History in Weston, Massachusetts, in case you're wondering. Um, okay, so let's see what we got. Uh, these are the fly these are flies that are non mosquitoiferous. Um, these are dipulidae, crane flies and hang flies and stuff like that. Um, these are all the regular flies. We have a, only a few moths. These are I'm a little surprised at the number of leaf hoppers. These are all leaf hopper, sharpshooter, spittle buggy kinds of things. Uh, these are all bees. Caddis flies, one katydid, did, just three small beetles, and these are wasps. So the things that we have here that are most numerous have a, a startle response to fly up. Beetles tend to fall down when they're startled. That's, I think, why we have only three. So what do we do now? Well, I'm going to pin out, um, I'm going to try to pin out a fairly good number of the flies and the bees um, and I'll do some of these leaf hoppers because when else are you going to have a really nice sample of leaf hoppers um, and we'll kind of go from there and, the, and these are all the mosquitoes okay so normally for something small 
you'd go with a, this is a double zero insect pin. If you can, you could put that through the thorax and then there's your pinned insect. A lot of these are too small, so we're gonna double mount them. And I have, these are Minuten pins. There's a double zero Minuten pins and um, number 20 Minuten pins. The, the double zero ones are basically like stainless steel fog. They're really, really tiny. Um, a lot of the ones that I'm going to use are the two zeros. They're um, easier to work with. So I'm going to get out some Minuten pins. You have to handle these. I'm going to get out some Minuten pins, and you have to handle these really carefully because if they get loose in the house, you're going to regret it. a fly we want to pin. I actually think I can get a I actually think I can get a pin through this one. A double zero. Okay, so there's the fly started on the pin. I'm gonna put this uh, the hole is the right depth so that it sets the insect at the correct height on the pin. So there we go. Um, so here's a fun trick. Now that I have the fly on the pin I want to spread the wings a little bit so that I can see the abdomen and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in this box down until the fly is just touching and now I can work with the wings Put a pin underneath it, just like that, just to spread it out a little bit. Pin under it like that, just to spread it out a little bit. And that's pretty much it. By the time I got done pinning everything out of that sample, I had about three dozen insects, and I had learned a lot about how malaise traps work. The bee specimens will contribute to the Bees of Rhode Island project that's going on right now, and I'm gonna use the flies to try to learn the flies myself. And don't forget to read The Fly Trap, where you can learn a lot more about Renee Malaise and what you can learn about life from collecting flies. Natural History Survey videos are made possible through the generous contributions of members and friends. Want to help us do more environmental science and conservation? Hit the like button, share our videos with your circle, subscribe, or make a financial contribution on our website, ranhs.org, or through Patreon. Thanks, and see you out there.